so anyway, we're going to um, run a code. Typical workload that I, I usually do personally, which is encoding video to see what, um, you know, how hot the system gets without the co extra cooling. So, or uh, specifically, well, actually both processor and graphics card because now it's in it's in the same environment. So, um, yeah, it'll be more exhausted there, so it will actually probably affect the graphics card also. But here we're running on the CPU at approximately 65 and the GPU at around 60 and now it's kind of running high. So we will go to switch to the um, So this is just one of my YouTube videos, so I'm just going to start encoding it. So I've set everything up, and um, it's just going to be HD quality. Now we'll start it up. And then we'll switch over to the taskbar. quite nicely on the processor and then um, can actually have a look at GPU load so this is the GPU load and the GPU load is actually a combination of encoding the video plus running exploit and recording this so it's quite a lot of load on the um, also on the graphics side of course Okay, so the, here's the head, and um, since I'm using AMD, I need to um, take away the uh, Intel bracket and replace it with the AMD one. So that was actually quite easy. That's just a, you can actually um, rotate this this one. That uh, no, it was yeah. You rotate it in one direction so you get the screws moving into the small hole or into the big hole and then you can just pull it off and then you can put this on and then you just rotate it and then you get this on the AMD bar. And then you need to put the clips on the side so you need to use one of these thumb screws and then the AMD compatible clip. So that's now done and I was thinking I'm going to tape this on temporarily so I'm messing to put the radiator on them and I won't um, damage the uh, pre-applied thermal paste. Okay, now then, uh, we're going to apply the fans. So these fans need to be installed on there like that. Oh, to get it into, into the picture somehow. So anyway, there's going to be three of them. And they're going to be positioned like where the holes are, and then you need to use these longer screws. And then you need to make sure that it's like like that, blowing out. And the direction of the airflow is actually given. So <laughs> it's a really, really small mark. I needed to use a magnifying glass to f to find it. Wait, I'll find it again. The camera will probably not show it. But it actually is. Oh, it's actually taking quite a good picture. It's. What's that? I don't think I was showing it correct. Oh, God, it's such a small. There are actually two arrows there. Oh, why did they have to make it so small? It's ridiculous. can't see it very well on the camera. 
take a magnifying glass. But that's that's ridiculous. I mean, couldn't they just have a, have designed it into the mold, the rotation direction and the airflow direction? And then one has to a little bit. I'm going to have to think about which side I want the cable to exit. Like, so I haven't really decided. But anyway, I'll, I won't be videoing that. I mean, it's just to put those there, take these screws, screw them in. Yeah, I'm making sure one has the correct orientation for um, blowing out. And that will be... Uh, lost the marking again. Yeah, so it's actually going to be like that. So that's the correct rotation. So. So, I'll get that done. So, that's done. I'll put the fans in place, screw it in place, decide to have the cables uh, coming from this side. The blow direction should be correct. Put some tape on this here to hold the old protective cover on. So they won't get damaged while I'm fiddling this. This is going to be quite heavy to put in, but I think I'll, I'll probably... Yeah, we'll see. I'll film the installation of this. And then it came with extra long screws. I think they want, like, if you want to have a pull and push system, but then they actually gave you the screws, so you just need to buy three more fans, and then you can make a really thick, thick sandwich of this. I have fans also on the other side. But I think I, I'm, I'm just going to try this for now. Okay. these small screws. Oh, it's tightened down. And now I need to remove the old AMD cooling system. So.
Now wait to it. No, I think that's the just a bit stuck and then this thermal paste was definitely not really much good yeah it's totally dry this is not good <laughs> okay so maybe I didn't need to buy more cooling because that's that stock thermal paste was definitely not a good deal this is a, the original AMD cooler that came with the process yuck Really not very good. You can see that. See? It's just got thermal, and that's all just pretty dry gunk. So no wonder it was running hot. Okay, can't really cry about that. We need to move on. Since I've already invested the money. Well, that was definitely not a good thing. I would have expected a big, you know, a big spread of thermal paste. Well, you can see a little bit of dyeing there. And it was stuck on, so... I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit too critical, but I, I would have expected it to look a little bit better. Now then, obviously, this thing here with these side clips is not really going to fit on that. To, I think it was to restore the original side bridges, so I'm going to have to try and find those. So, now I found the, the bits, the crossbars with the holders. And one needs to um, position them back with um, some screws, original ones. And then the thing is that these have a key. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show. It has a key on, on, the, on the plastic so you can't put the, um, the wrong way around. Oh, it's not easy to see. And that's on the printed circuit board. You have a hole only on one side. Now then, if I'm lucky, this plate will not move and I don't have to access it from the other side. If I do, then it's going to be a bigger job. Let's see if I very carefully screw it in. I think it's actually the plate is being pressed by cables. Oh, there's a drop the screw. And I was thinking of taking the thermal paste off the um, off this thing, but then I was thinking I'm just gonna I'm gonna run it with the thermal paste that delivered from the factory. And then if the thermals don't work, then I'll just replace it. Give the thermal that thermal paste a chance. The other bracket in place. And it seems to be theoretically at least going on all along.
Let's put that in. And now, theoretically, we should be able to put this one in. I need to somehow center it so that the logo will be the right way around. So I think I'll just take this one. Put some tape on it to keep trying to protect the I haven't practiced it before. Okay, why does that not want? Just double check. Feeling wise, it feels seems to be okay. Just tighten it up on the side, maybe not too much. Oh, that seems to be relatively secure. I'd hate to over tighten that. That feels quite sane. Yeah. So that's in and the logo and text is correct orientation. At least and the pipes don't look that bad. I mean I am going I'm gonna come back and do cable management some someday. I think that we're that what I'd like to do now is just to get it up and around test that it actually works. So okay these are the coming out of the heat block. A bit tight with the memory there. I don't think it should disturb anything. Yes and then there's the USB cable. I think I want to take this out so I don't forget it. Put it there. <laughs> Okay, so let's get the fans in place first. So I think that'll be good enough to hold those in place. So we won't um, slip out and go into any other fan. Okay, so then um, we need to find a So 
Well, this is a USB cable, and it's for, I think, for. And then we need to take the plastic off. There's a plastic protection on this one also. So, anyway, this is a nifty thing. And then let's see which way around this goes. need to look up in the motherboard manual the USB header for that. Okay, I had one, one USB header that uh, was down there. So I think I'll route the cable along the side there. Should have actually done it already now. I wonder if I should change it because now it's going to I can make it go on the side. Maybe I can oops, make it go on the side anyway. To change anything that much. Something like that. As I said, cable management could be neater. Okay, then we have SATA power and I have one connector here. So I need to figure out which way around this is going to go. So I'll work on trying to reorient that because I'm using it for a SATA and then there's the uh, USB uh, card adapter. So I'm going to have to try and Just, just make it. Oh, right, that was a bit of luck. Okay, and then there's this one. And I think this is the pulse width. But it just measures the speed, so I have to check the manual where this single wire goes. Okay, that was just the CPU fan. It just goes to the CPU fan header to sense the speed of this, and then we can. I think this has a piece of plastic. Let's hope. Yeah. It looks like there's protective plastic on it. Yes. Actually, it does have. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, I can run it like this. 
open here. Okay, let's see what happens when we, when we put it on. Yeah, it was two out of three fans turning. Okay, now the last awesome one's starting. Should have had the camera on the camera. It was odd because those two, the two first ones started, but not the third. Okay, we have RGB there, and um, the system seems to be booting. So, yeah, I can hear a pump at least. I mean, the thing is, the modern CPUs they will just shut down. Did it do that? Or is it still booting? Oh, it was came up Windows. <laughs> Everything went there. Ah, oh, you get so paranoid. The, 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 both monitors went dark. I was like, what? Of course, it does. It does that, you know, when you start up Windows. But when you're trying to do these kind of installations, you don't want that to happen. Okay, so, um, you know, not that bad. So at least nothing's blown up. And uh, now we will, um, I'm just going to shut it down again so, so that I can reorientate it and close up. Close it up for now. I'm going to do the final cable management after I've been running it for a couple of weeks to actually see that it works. And then we can run some benchmarks. Or the benchmark redo the load test that I had. So anyway, now we're going to um, try and benchmark the temperatures that we get when we um, have the cooler installed. So I'll just go into um, resolve and start the um, encoding. So. Yeah, that's life. Yeah, anyway, you saw the temperatures there, quite nice, um, very good sound level, very low sound level at least, and uh, yeah. well, I think that was kind of a success. Anyway, if you like this video, um, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon to get notified for more videos, um, you know, tell other people that are interested in the water uh, closed loop water cooling solutions, uh, watch the video, and um, yeah, that was interesting. And I'll uh, see you in the next one.